Welcome to our parish, Blessed Sacrament in Seattle. We are happy to have you joining us for this streamed liturgy. While watching the Mass via the stream does not fulfill our Sunday or Holy Day obligation, it is a great resource to aid in the prayer of those who are not obligated, those who are sick or homebound, um, for those who care for them, uh, or who for other serious reasons cannot attend the Mass. It's also a great opportunity for our community to stay connected through the music and preaching and prayer, even when we may be separated by distance. And so I invite you to gather your heart and mind in prayer as we turn to the Lord to listen to his word and to offer that sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source and the summit of the Christian life. Music and readings for this Mass can be found in the worship aids, available at the entrances to the church. Please return those worship aids to the entrances at the end of Mass. We will begin shortly.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Besides you, who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, 
you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we thought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The Word of the Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, 
saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull them up, if you pull up the weeds, you might up, uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. Yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Power is not something that we find in a superhero movie. Power is something specifically defined by its activity. If I have the power to do something, it is the activity itself that defines the power. When we hear from our book of wisdom, we hear that God has power. Specifically, it says, power attends you whenever you will. 
But it's not the fact that God can do everything that shows his power, but the fact that he does do everything that shows his power. And a beautiful element of this is when we look at our saints and we find that they come from every class, every age, every time. And God's power is not shown in them because they themselves can do all things. But his power is shown through them because his power can do all things. And his power works especially, as we know from the cross, through human weakness. What does this have to say with our parable today? Our parable, the big one that we have regarding the weeds and the wheat. It involves the fact that when Jesus is growing the wheat, he is growing it to fruition. He is growing it to completion. And here and now, we are not the harvesters. The angels are the harvesters. This is the beautiful thing about him interpreting the parable, because I know that if I had to interpret this parable, I'd get it wrong. The angels are the harvesters, meaning that it's not ripe until everything is done. Everything is settled. And that means for me, an understanding that comes from the Book of Wisdom. You taught your people that those who are just must be kind. When we talk about those, uh, the wheat growing to its fullest, growing to fruition, it means that it's going to be growing up going to be aging. Just like wine and the wine skin need to go together, so we also know that the wheat needs to come to fullest fruition and not be harvested early and not be in danger. So we know that God has to be kind. He is kind because he treats all of us as we are. He loves each one of us as we are. He knows us right now. He desires us and wants us right now. He doesn't want our future selves. He doesn't want our past selves. He wants us now to bear fruit for the kingdom. And it is his kindness that St. Peter reminds us, which allows for salvation to happen through time. Again, salvation happens through time. God doesn't say, well, you know, you got five more minutes. He doesn't say something like, well, I guess when you're 20, we'll find out how you'll end up. He doesn't give us deadlines. He doesn't have us work towards being someone or something. He wants us to bear fruit now. He wants us to be his now. And the only way that we can truly do this is by acting from his power now. And it doesn't matter whether we're really young or really old. The prophets prove this, right? Jeremiah, I'm too young. God's saying, don't say you're too, too young. 
I called you from your womb. When you were even younger, right? I knew you. So we always have something to do, to act on. We can always show God's power. It's not about what we are going to be, what we were, it's about what we are right now. And God loves us right now. When I consider this parable and just think about it myself, think, what would happen if I went after the weeds when the wheat was still being, when the, when the wheat was still growing up? What would, what would happen? Well, I can think of at least two things. One, of, one is, if I tried pulling up the weeds, I probably would also pull up some wheat because I couldn't tell the difference. Wheat and weeds, for me, probably, not being a botanist, would be pretty similar when they're young, right? They have stalks, they have leaves. So I wouldn't want to pull up something good and toss it aside as if it didn't matter. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if I went after the weeds, I would also be loosening the soil and maybe doing something which would be good for the wheat around. Now if I try and interpret this a little bit more, I know that each person is good, created by God. There's no throwaway person. So I couldn't say, well, I'll just do this and the casualties God will take care of. That's the whole Deus Volt thing in the Middle Ages. Wasn't a good idea. Okay. Do you know that story? You go into a town, you go into a town and kill everyone and God will figure it out later. Not a good idea. All right. We're not going in that direction. So we don't want to take people out as we start to take bad people out. We don't want any casualties. We don't want any friendly fire. The reason why is because every person is here because God does will that. And it is through his power that each and every one of us is able to do good now. And that's what we have to choose. We have to choose the good now. The second part is, I don't want to cause scandal, nor do I want to create in the church unnecessary fear. Let me give you a number. At the age of 20, we can figure out whether everyone's going to be bad or whether everyone's going to be good. Now think about that. I know it might be easy. Oh, good. 20. I think I can work towards that. But think about how that would affect people. Would it really create, sort of, would it really help flourish uh, the free will in our world? Or would it really help us to understand a loving God? If we all work towards the age of 20, and then after 20 just sort of gave up, or if we all work towards the age of 20 and then just found it really hard to do and then gave up, then we're creating a world or a system which isn't God's, it's ours. And that's the big thing about this parable. The slaves are saying, hey, let's make this easy. Let's go after the, meat, the weeds right now. And God says, no, too many other things will happen. We have to wait till the end. And we have to do this because right now, this is the time when we can produce fruit, when we can be fruitful, when we can be good, when we can do what is right and just. And that is showing God's kindness. 
How does this translate into our own daily activity? Don't give up on other people. You might have given them one chance to do what's good. Give them another. You might have forgiven them once, but then you're not, you say, well, I'm not going to forgive them again. Forgive them again. We don't decide who is good and who is evil. It's at the end of the age, when the fruit is being produced, when the harvest is ready, and the righteous glow will shine like the sun. If you've seen wheat, sorry, if you've seen wheat, you know about this uh, the shining like the sun element. So that's one thing. Keep on offering God's kindness through forgiveness and through love. And if you think that God has abandoned you because there is too much against you, then ask for God's help one more time. Don't give up on God. Because every time you ask, he has one more opportunity to show his kindness and to show his mercy. But if you give up on him, if you deny him, he will have to deny you. But if you're unfaithful, God will remain faithful. Just admit it's too hard and ask God for help. Because God's power is shown in human weakness. And human weakness is shown when we have to ask for help. The Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. So let the Spirit in. And ask God, Abba, Father, send your Son, Jesus, who is Lord, to come into my life, to make his home here, to abide with me, so that I might show your goodness and kindness in this world, so that I might be your image so that I might be your adopted son, your adopted daughter. Now, if we hear that, we know that the Spirit is in our life when we can call God Abba, Father. The Spirit is in our life when we can call Jesus Lord. And the Spirit is in our life when we can be fruitful and share what is the Lord's with others. All we must do is to pray as the Spirit leads us. Lord Jesus, help me not to give up. Not to give up on my brothers or sisters who are struggling. Not to give up on you who are kind and merciful. Help me always to do good in this present moment. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With an abundance of faith, hope, and love, let us bring our prayers to our God and Father. That our Bishop Paul may follow God's will and seek the good of those he serves. Let us pray to the Lord. That those entrusted with dispensing justice and interpreting the law may look to Christ as a source of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. that we may wait for God's harvest time and not pass harsh judgment on others. Let us pray to the Lord. That the age in our community may be sustained by our thoughtfulness and friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. That for those who have died, may be gathered into the harvest of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God and Father, we lift up all of our prayers in love to you. We ask you to hear and answer them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church, and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. <laughs> and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. I admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As Catholics, we truly believe that what is present on this altar is no longer bread and wine, but truly is Jesus Christ, truly is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. Therefore, this communion is also a sign in the reality of our union together in Him and in the Catholic Church. And so if you are not Catholic or not reconciled with the Church or otherwise unable to receive the Eucharist, you may either remain in your pew or come forward with your arms across your chest and receive a blessing from the priest.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening. We will be having a memorial mass for Angela Fernandez this week. Um, it will be Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, there will be a rosary beforehand at 6.30 and a reception that will follow. We also have a grief support group that is starting in the parish this week. Thursday afternoon, you can find details in the bulletin. Saturday, we have altar server training for new and returning servers. Uh, you can still sign up. And Catechesis with the Pastor will pick up again next Monday, not this week, but the following, um, as we talk about the vices. Uh, if you want to catch up on the first class from a few weeks ago, it is on the website, along with all the previous Catechesis with the Pastor classes. And lots of other things coming up. Uh, please take one of those bulletins home. Our ACA campaign and organ fundraising continue. Our annual parish appreciation is in August. And the Archbishop's Golf Tournament is coming up, just to name a few things. And this evening we have our first uh, 30s and 40s group summer bon backyard bonfire uh, that will be in the Priory backyard. God bless and know that you're all in my prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.